So, like many of you, I've been super excited about Stormgate, the new RTS game coming from Frost Giant, uh, which should be out in the next couple of years. And as an RTS caster of both StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2, and even a little bit of Warcraft 3, um, there's definitely some units I have wanted to see, which I can link you to a video of over here. But there's also units I don't want to see. And I hope that uh, Frost Giant doesn't take inspiration from these units. So this is my list of five units that I just think aren't that exciting, aren't that fun uh, for RTS. And frankly, I hope we don't see stuff like this going into uh, the release of Stormgate. No Warcraft 3 units, just StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2 for this video. So the one unit to start this off that I don't like is the StarCraft 2 Zealot. Now I like the StarCraft 1 Zealot. StarCraft 1 Zealot is a lot of fun to use. But the StarCraft 2 Zealot, first of all, there's almost no melee micro in StarCraft 2. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but you know, the Zealot, it's it's a slower unit, and its speed upgrade, frankly, it, it takes away my ability to control it in the game. When you upgrade charge, uh, it defaults onto a unit and attacks that. And I just don't feel like that's the way an RTS should function. There's so much great stuff you can see with melee fights in RTS. And if you don't believe me, look at any good Warcraft 3 game. There's so many interesting moments where units can block each other off uh, in groups or body block individually. Um, uh, watching two melee units chase each other is really exciting. In StarCraft 1, the StarCraft 1 Zealot, those fights versus Zerglings are so rewarding and interesting to watch. But in StarCraft 2, I've even talked to pro gamers that complain they have to hope that the game AI will give them a good pairing with the charge upgrade. So if you're going to have any melee unit, don't make it like the StarCraft 2 Zealot. You're automating a weird part of the game that just isn't what the game should be about. So I hope we don't have anything like uh, a StarCraft II Zealot with uh, a charge upgrade, because I just think it takes from the game. The number two unit I hope we don't take inspiration from is the StarCraft One Ghost. Now, many of you may already know the StarCraft One Ghost is one of the worst units in the game. StarCraft II Ghost, it's interesting. Uh, it's a strong unit, and it's something you have to have in the late game. But my issue with the Ghost overall, uh, honestly, in StarCraft 1, is the, there was such an emphasis put on nukes. And this is almost really where I want to go with this. Can we please not have the whole nuke thing happen in the game? Or if it is going to be happening, can we make it actually exciting? Can we make it maybe uh, as suspenseful as it should be? Because right now, nukes in both StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, they're lame. <laughs> They don't do that much damage. Uh, there's there's always been a lot of hype built up about the Ghost, whether it was, uh, you know, in either of the StarCrafts or even, you know, with StarCraft Ghost, the game that never came out, but that that nuking ability was there. You know, the number of times I have casted a live event in either of the StarCrafts and a nuke is fired and I watch the whole audience. This, this is going to be an audience that doesn't know the game that well. They start to freak out. They get excited. I see people grabbing each other's shoulders. Oh, my God, a nuke. And then they don't realize, oh, the nuke doesn't do anything. It almost never hits anything of value. It really doesn't do that much damage. Most buildings are not even destroyed by one nuke. And I think it's just a misleading thing in the game. And I understand why it was implemented and what a fun idea that was. But we also have to appreciate where RTS is now and that this is the most peripheral thing that can happen in a game. It basically happens in the rarest of moments in StarCraft 1, usually to humiliate somebody. Holy sh**. Greatest nuke ever, anyone ever did in StarCraft 1. Or it happens in really stagnant, stalemate-ish uh, ZVTs, where you know the Terran is just gonna try to keep nuking an area over and over to keep the Zerg army from ever really engaging in. So a unit like that, where I guess one of the key abilities of it is you know, a, a thing that just isn't great, for an eSport and isn't great as a spectator sport, I hope they don't keep that in Stormgate. The third unit I do not like this time are going back into StarCraft 2. It's the Queen. That's what I expected. The Queen, look, from a game design standpoint, I get it. I think it's cool that they took the Flying Queen from StarCraft 1 and made it function more like a bug Zerg 
uh, kind of unit uh, that it would look over the the hatchery and allow you to produce more. But the angle that this unit ended up taking, it's basically a catch-all for defense. You end up making like seven or nine of them early on in a game. You force out creep. Uh, there's almost no way to engage the Zerg by air. Um, it, it's it's kind of a strong unit that makes a lot of the early game just not interesting because you can't really engage with it. It's just too strong. I think any RTS game, if it's going to be interesting, there has to be a way for the two sides to really engage with each other, to find opportunities to do damage to each other. And I think the Queen prevents far too much of that and really just makes the game a bit stagnant early on. Now, the fourth unit, I really hope we don't see as any kind of inspiration in Stormgate is the Swarm Host. You might be asking yourself, which version of the Swarm Host are you talking about? I kind of feel like all of them. Uh, although I do think the later version of the, in Legacy of the Void, that Swarm Host, it's not terrible. I think it's a pretty good fix for what they had. First of all, when I casted Heart of the Swarm, it was brutal as a fan or as a caster to cast these games that went on forever. I think kind of like the charge lot, don't take away my ability to control my units and attack with them. Now, even, even though I mentioned, you know, in a previous video, I like the StarCraft 1 carrier, you can manipulate the carriers very well and do a lot of interesting stuff with them. Whereas I feel like if you're going to have anything get too automated, uh, like you do with the Swarm host, especially in Heart of the Swarm, it just sort of takes away from that exciting interactive element of the game. And now for the number five unit, and I'm going to hurt some feelings here when I say this, and this may be my most controversial take yet. I am hoping that we do not have a Baneling in Stormgate. Oh my god. He's gosh. actually going to max out Bane. I think this might be the most Banelings in GSL history. It might be tasteless. Oh my god. That is so, 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 so many Banelings. Look, I like TVZ in StarCraft 2. It's exciting. But ultimately, the Baneling became just, it's its too much. The, the ground army micro is fundamentally destroyed in, or it just changes too much of the game with the Baneling. The fact that you can make so many of these and all they have to do is connect with targets of value. I don't know. I, I feel like we should go back into somewhere between StarCraft 1 and WarCraft 3 for the kind of ground fights. I think the Baneling, it's exciting in a game as fast as StarCraft 2, but at the same time, I don't think you want something on the ground with splash damage that, that has a speed upgrade that can connect with units that easily. I feel like the Baneling is so common in so many games that a moment that should become exciting becomes basically a par for the course in any game. Because it's just, uh, you know, we have Banelings connecting all the time. If there was a way to make it, you know, more like a spider mine, uh, where there's a little bit more drama involved, more like a scarab from a reaver where it might, well, maybe this is a bad example, may or may not connect with its target. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, it bugged out. That's so amazing. Holy sh**. Uh, depending on how buggy it is. But, you know, like a Scourge, I think, is a better version of this, right? It will connect with one target, almost certainly kill it, especially if two are there together. But at the same time, it's not going to have the kind of splash damage effect uh, that can be so devastating that, you know, a small number of Baneling connections can completely uh, erode another player's position and maybe they can't come back from them. So those are the five units from StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2 that uh, I hope Stormgate does not take inspiration from. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, I hope you subscribe to the channel, uh, give it a like, uh, and turn your alerts on. I will be making more Stormgate content as the game gets closer and closer to the, re to the release. That includes uh, streaming it on my Twitch stream. That's twitch.tv forward slash tasteless TV, uh, as well as casting games there on my Twitch channel and uploading them to my YouTube. So I hope you join me for that. Check out our merch at tastelessthreads.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.